Hey guys, we've got some more breaking Tundra news, as is the way these days, Andre. Manufacturers are slowly rolling out news on their newest and most, well, in this case, perhaps anticipated product, and that is a Tundra. So what are we talking about in this video, Andre? Well, we are talking about the fourth official teaser image of the new Next Generation 2022 Tundra. Also, uh, a couple of other stories, because uh, one of our viewers, uh, Bjorn, sent us some images of the new Land Cruiser 300 series, which shares a lot of its chassis with the new Tundra. And also a recent review of the 300 series um, from another friend. So I want to talk about all that stuff, but we got to start with this panoramic roof, dude. So are you kind of, are we doing kind of a Tundra stew? Are we throwing all this stuff in there and <laughs> trying to get a better picture of what the new Tundra will be like? Yeah, because Toyota is not giving us much. So they haven't given us specs on the Tundra or sizing or power or towing. All we have is images, and we also know that the Land Cruiser that's overseas, that's not coming to the U.S., will share the chassis and some components. So we're guessing that perhaps the stuff that's on the new Land Cruiser will also make its way to the new Tundra. Yes. All right, so let's start with the stuff that we do know for sure, and that is a panoramic sunroof. Yeah, so uh, almost everybody has one now, right? Yeah, for sure. So Ford started this. So the F-150 has, you know, came out... Uh, a few years back with a panoramic, you know, opening sunroof. Then Ram followed, right? In 2019, Ram showed up with a nice, really nice sunroof. Um, and now, I guess, it's turn uh, for Toyota to do it. So uh, how big is that sunroof? I don't want to look over my shoulder. Does it cover the entire roof or is it, you know, there's different panoramic sunroofs, right? There's, it used to be that a sunroof was about the size of one of those trays you'd have at lunch, right, for uh, your sure. cafeteria-style food. And yeah. then, then it became like four times the size of that. And then the latest sunroofs are the entire roof. So where on that spectrum does the well, uh, Tundra roof fall? So all we have is this image. And this is a crew cab uh, because I can see four windows, right? Um, and it looks like it's covering the entire roof and half of it opens. So it looks very comparable to the Ford and the Ram um, uh, options right now. Um, and also, uh, not to be forgotten, dude, the most important is the rear sliding glass. Yes, yes. that is uh, a very unique feature uh, that is unique uh, to the Toyota. Uh, most pickup trucks, as you know, have glass in the rear that slides across. So there's like a little uh, almost portal that opens up. A little tiny one. Yeah, yeah, yeah portal. Porthole, and then that slides either to the left or the right. But Toyota has this thing where the entire glass section slides into uh, the rest of the truck, which is really cool. Yeah, and you could see it in this image. I'm kind of pointing with my mouse here on the screen recording. You can see the rear glass is kind of half down, and it has you know those um, heating elements in it for the rear window, and it's really cool. It's useful. For example, I've used one in the current Tundra when backing down a boat ramp. Yeah, you know you can put the glass down. You can hear people in the boat, you know, giving you instructions or you want to tell them something, and it's really cool, really nice. And if you have a big dog like we do, Blaze, yeah, he can <laughs> stick out. <laughs> he can jump through. But as opposed to just sticking his head in that little portal. <laughs> right. Uh, dude, another couple of things we see. We, I see red seat belts. Wow. You know, not many trucks have red seat belts. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I suspect that must be one of the, like, you know, TRD Pro models. Yeah. Right? So they distinguish themselves. I got to tell you, Andre, uh, you know... Porsche does this a lot, right? You can get regular seatbelts, or for an extra $200,000, <laughs> you can get yellow or red seatbelts. And yes. I'm wondering how much it costs to actually dye that seatbelt material red. <laughs> it seems to be the way of the world now where, yeah. you know, people are paying a lot for what I think are very minor and very inexpensive upgrades. But anyway, go for it, Toyota, if you can sell it with red seatbelts. And if you don't upgrade for it, buy a lot of money. I'd love red seatbelts. Why not? Yeah, so the other things we know is what it looks like from the front. You know, Toyota has um, uh, published this image. This is a TRD Pro once again. We still don't know a lot of the sizing components of it, but it looks pretty aggressive, right? We've seen that before. We also have this image, uh, which shows the top of the hood. Uh, I'm sorry, the engine cover, right? And this has blue outlines and the lettering iForce Max, which some people say, and everybody says, that it could be a hybrid. So, you know, on the Toyota website, right, coming soon, they have like these images that they're slowly populating. How many more empty squares are there? 
There are four more squares. <laughs> they do four more videos. Look, 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 <laughs> look. So, so we we've, we've it's like Hollywood squares or something. So we got four squares done, and then four more to go. <laughs> If you're watching this, Toda, I think at some point we're gonna be we're gonna just get tired of of this drip 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 of information, uh, and we'll wait for what September to roll around when we actually get our hands on the truck. Yeah, or um, we don't know exactly what date it is, but they're saying September to October potentially yeah. it will be fully unveiled to the world with every specification you could possibly want. Yeah. So and actually, you know, I, I put a kibosh on these little images for the most part on the car channel. Uh, because the manufacturers were, I think, abusing this uh, feature to, you know, to get as much coverage as possible. And so I got really tired of these, like, little squinty shots of, you know, front ends where you can't make it out. Or right. just a really tight shot of a turn signal. You know, it, it doesn't, doesn't feel like uh, uh, it's adding anything to the story. The reason we're doing this one for the Tundra is because, well, it's been forever since a new Tundra. And so we feel like this is a vehicle that is important enough where we need to kind of keep you guys in the loop as to what's new. So let's talk about our friend Bjorn, who's Swiss, who lives in, uh, I think it's United you, Arab you, Emirates, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah you know. And who actually went to a dealership and took some pictures of the brand new 300 series Land Cruiser. Yeah, so this is it. Uh, this uh, It's in blue. It's right there in the showroom in the UAE. And he has taken a few images. Specifically, the most interesting is actually what's happening on the inside. So first of all, we've seen this before uh, from the Toyota materials, but they have now a larger screen, right? So it's approximately, um, um, there's some information that says it's about 12 inches diagonal. It's a um, landscape mode. Uh, but then look at this, dude. He has um, detailed shots of the console, which shows several things. First of all, crawl control, then ECT second, so you can start in second gear. They've had that before, right? Also, ECT power button, which uh, tr um, you know kind of changes the way the transmission works. Also, turn assist, where you drag the rear tire. Yeah. Um, and center locker, and then two more buttons. Look, front and rear lockers, so triple locked Land Cruiser. So it would be cool if all that tech made it over to the Tundra. Uh, and the Tundra notoriously has not had a rear locker, let alone a front locker. So, you know, yes. this might be something. <laughs> so you go from, you know, not a lot of locking to all the locking. Because the Tacoma, of course, has a rear locker. Yeah. And so we know Toyota has that in their inventory of parts. Uh, so hopefully they'll put it on the next Tundra. Yeah, and they say that they will share the engine, right? So the Land Cruiser, this new one, has the twin turbo V6, the three and a half liter. Uh, no hybrid uh, information is yet available as far as power, but this engine in the Land Cruiser produces somewhere around like about 410 ish horsepower and about 480 ish pound feet of torque, which is a big improvement of what the current V8 offers, right, in the Tundra. And um, so that's very cool. And if triple lockers come to the TRD Pro Tundra, that would be, I think, great for all the enthusiasts. Yeah, I think we would love that because, look, uh, let's face it, Andre, uh, the world of trucks in the last 12 months has dramatically shifted, right, with the Rivian, the Cybertruck, and now the Lightning. Uh, and because of electrification, it's much easier to not only have locker-like features, right, but you could actually power wheels each, each wheel independently, independently yeah. right with with uh, the gmc hummer so you can do things like you know crab mode or you can do four wheel steering or tank mode right on the rivian right yeah, yeah. and so, and so i, I kind of feel like um you know toyota uh needs to up their game because the world has dramatically shifted uh and all the buzz right now from where i sit at least is you know around the electric trucks uh and um so I, it, it, I'm just a little concerned that we may be talking about things that, that are almost like too little too late. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, like when they planned that a hybrid uh, truck was cool, but since that time, Ford has built a hybrid. They've, you know, they've well, this needed to be out like last year right. or they, two years yeah, ago. They, right? they, now they've announced, of course, an all-electric F-150. Uh, even though the Rivian and I suspect the Cybertruck are going to be delayed, this time next year they will be out, uh, and so and the Lightning should be out, and the Lightning should yeah. be out as well. So yeah. uh, right now, you know, all, all of the conversation is kind of moved on beyond will the Tundra get a rear locker or not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but and so, and so that, that's my biggest concern. You know, I, I kind of feel like I kind of feel like uh, the world is quickly changing. You know, it's like when when um, when we went from 
buggy and carriage to the you know modern car, right? Right? And people, you know, the, the language changed from a muffler being something you wore around your neck to keep you warm <laughs> in, a, in a buggy. Wow, to, you're to, going deep, dude. To a thing that you put on a vehicle to keep it from yeah. being too being loud. loud. And right. I think we're kind of at that same, you know, point right now in time. So, anyway. Well, I, I think a lot of Toyota truck purists would say, uh, well, first of all, they want the V8 to stay. I mean, there's still a lot of people that, you know, are saying keep sure. the V8, uh, you know, do all these things. And they trust they trust Toyota uh, because they've had Toyotas in the past. And, you know, the twin turbo V6 should be, you know, delivering more power. It should be also reliable. Um, and uh, but yeah, and Toyota also said that an electric truck will be coming in within two years. But like you said, um, you know, other manufacturers already have more than just announcements. They're, they're showing trucks, prototypes, etc. So let, let's get back to kind of um, the news, right? You also have a video there of one of your uh, Russian, uh, well, one of our Russian YouTube friends, yeah. friends, who actually took the new Land Cruiser off-road uh, and did a com comprehensive review of it. And you said he was very impressed by it, which yeah. holds well for the Tundra. So this is a channel, um, Diaz Valihan. Um, who's actually uh, went to an event that was in Kazakhstan in the mountains there. And this is an event was put up by Toyota. Of course, Land Cruiser 300 series, the new one, is not coming to the U.S., but it is coming to other countries like Kazakhstan. And uh, they actually had an event, and he drove it. And he was quite impressed uh, with the following things. Here's I'm showing you kind of a little preview of what he's done. Uh, but, of course, he said, first of all, the 360-degree camera system is now much more high resolution because everybody complained about this, right? Yeah. Um, then they have the new see-through hood and also a see-through trunk <laughs> so you can kind of see you know around your vehicle but yeah, yeah, through the, your vehicle let me just clarify the hood's not made of like plexiglass <laughs> it's just the camera uses movie magic to get rid of the hood when you're looking at the camera y yes exactly and like land rover also right, uses does the this same feature. thing yeah, so yeah. you can actually see where the front wheels are so if you're off-roading you don't go creaming off a cliff uh, because you didn't know where you were replacing your front or in this case i guess rear wheels too Exactly. And, and so, so here's some of the footage that he showed. Then he used the crawl control system that's been there before, right? But you know how it always made those noises, you know, right? You know, just kind of uh, until a brakes working and yeah. the traction it's control. Like, work. A, like, a, like a drum corps, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right? Like, like a marching band. On this new Land Cruiser, according to this review, it's almost silent. That's good. You hear nothing, it just kind of controls your speed off road. They also have a new mode where you can go up to 30 uh, kilometers per hour. What is it, about 25 miles per hour maybe or 22 miles per hour in the scroll mode. Okay. So you can actually move a little bit faster than just five miles per hour uh, in this new mode. So, and of course he, he didn't do a zero to 60 specifically in this event, but he said it was more powerful and quicker. Now, you know, Toyota kind of pioneered dragging that inside wheel on the turn, right? Uh, and I think Ford now added it to all of their Broncos, so it comes, yeah. because it's just a bit of software. Not all Broncos, but it's yeah. an option. Yeah it's, yeah, it's just a bit of software. I think it disengages at 12 miles an hour in the Bronco, but basically uh, I think that's something that we'll see proliferating uh, around. And that's a very useful feature. If you've ever done Black Bear and you're on that first serpentine, the one that goes right after you come down the falls, uh, you'll want that feature. Yeah, and actually I got an email uh, yesterday from a viewer who was very concerned that that feature could erode the trail more because, you know, he was saying that if one wheel is braked and the other wheel is overspinning, you know, you could be digging on the outside. You know, we'll, we, the jury is still out, I think, um, exactly how it will work and exactly until we test it in the real world I, I on guess, the real I trail. I guess it depends, you know, if you're in sand, no big whoop. Right. If you're on hard rock, you might be throwing rocks or something else or eroding. If you're on, I think if you're on like slick rock, no big whoop, right? Because right. there's nothing to. But if you're in, I guess if you're in gravel or something or dirt, you might be able to do that. Um, you know, Andre. You know, the world is changing. Just this week, Ford announced that it's doing away or killing their diesel option in the F-150. Remember, it wasn't that long ago that we were sitting here talking about the race to have a diesel option in full-size trucks, and now yes. Ford is doing away with it. Right. Um, and so, you know, uh, there is there's that Chinese saying, may we live in interesting times, and I think we are living in interesting times. And speaking of interesting times, we're about to head to the airport uh, to go to the Chicago Auto Show, uh, which is certainly curtailed because of COVID, uh, but stay tuned to TFL Truck and TFL Now uh, for full coverage. So anything that's going to be there, 
um, we will definitely cover. We know there's a new Jeep or at least a new version of a Jeep coming. We don't want the cat out of the bag, so stay tuned for probably for off-road for that. Yeah. Uh, and then we are going to be hands-on with the Maverick, the Lightning, and, um, well, the Bronco, even though we've probably done and, the Bronco. And also there. they may have the electric transit van. I want to see that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So uh, be sure to stay tuned. Usually all of our um, auto show coverage lives on TFL Now. Uh, but if it's big enough and important enough, we'll put it on some of the other channels as well. Uh, anything else that we should know about the Tundra, Andre, before we wrap this up? Well, no, that's kind of all I wanted to show you. Uh, pretty excited that the rear glass still comes down. Thank you, Toyota. Yep, thanks. And uh, guys, thank you for watching. And remember, um, if you're uh, into trucks, be sure to listen to our podcast, uh, TFL Talking Trucks, where Andre always does a deep dive on any of the newest and greatest features with the people who actually design and build these things. So check out Talking Trucks uh, at your favorite podcast location. Of and, course, uh, Talking TFL, TFL Talk. Yeah, we got right. car. Meantime, you bicker <laughs> and argue and people hate us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, there you have it. Ciao. Okay.